mystery. At all times, it lingers around us, whispering in the depths of understanding, calling us to lean in further, to explore more, to ask the big questions. Faith and fact, certainty and the unknown. Can they dance with one another to not be at odds? Revealing the divine mystery at work in creation and embedded in all of existence. Unfolding that which is not seen, but always has been. I wonder. Well, I remember the summer before my sophomore year of high school, and I had been a pretty good student up to that point, like getting all A's, you know. Um, I'd also been a pretty good Christian, like always going to church and, and doing all of the things. Um, and as I was going into my sophomore year, there was this one class I saw on my schedule that made me kind of nervous, and that class was biology. Anybody in biology class right now? A few? Okay, y'all are like, we took that in eighth grade. Yeah, I know. Back then, you know, it was, it was different back then. It was a long time ago when I, your boy was in school. But I was nervous about it because they were going to be teaching us evolution. So I actually remember asking my youth pastor at the time, like, what do I do? What do I do when it comes down to this topic of evolution? Because I believe in God, and according to the biblical account, right? I'm looking at Genesis 1 and, and how God created the heavens and the earth. And if you keep reading, he apparently did it all in six days. And I'm like, won't he do it? Won't he will? And I, I believed that he could and that he did. But I also knew that they were going to be teaching me about evolution and the age of the universe and the age of the earth. And I asked my youth pastor, like, what am I supposed to do? Because I don't want to lie on the test and go against my belief, but I also don't want to fail the test. So like, what am I supposed to do? Um, I wanted to stand up for what I believed in. I didn't want to just be there like, oh, the earth is 4.543 billion years old and not believe it in my heart. And I'll never forget this. My youth pastor told me, he was like, just get the answers on the test right, but remember what you believe. And I was like, okay, very confused. And that right there was the moment I, I can remember where, where this, this tension between faith and science began for me. Because that statement told me that faith and science cannot coexist. That, that there's this over there and you got to appease the, the secular world in your public school, but over here in church and in the Bible, you know the truth, okay? And so just get through it, get A's, get out of high school and just and forget it. That's, that's kind of the vibe that I was getting from his response to me. So now I, I look around the room, I see a bunch of intelligent people. Y'all are all very smart people. Pat yourself on the back. It's all good. You'd be like, I'm a genius. Yeah, that's you. Um, <laughs> by nature, you're curious people. You're also living in the most informed generation to ever exist, which fun, <laughs> right? Could be a blessing and a curse. And uh, you, just like most people, want answers, right? Like we seek answers. We want to know why things work and how things work. We're curious. And uh, we know, probably because we're here, we're at least curious about God, too. And we know um, we, we might want to believe in him and, and live this life for him. But there seems to be evidence all around us that God is wrong. That what he says in his word is, is wrong. And it doesn't add up and it doesn't make sense according to the evidence that we see maybe in our biology class. And so I wanted to build out an example with us this morning, and it might be kind of long and really nerdy, but hang with me, okay? Here's the example. Archaeologists have a process of determining the age of organic material, things that were alive. They can, they can look at it and see how old it is by using a method called radiocarbon dating. Now, this, this is not the most accurate um, sort of method of dating things, but it is pretty accurate up to about 50,000 years because carbon-14, it, it, it's this, um, this material, or it, it ages at a fixed rate uh, of about 5,730 years of a half-life. So every 5,730 years, there's about half as much carbon-14 in the dead material. So... Um, there was this, uh, th these fossilized bones and, and feces, which is like, um, in case I didn't know. Yo, is this still on? Okay. There's these fossilized bones and, and these tablets that appear to be of human origin found in these caves 
in Oregon. And they, they ran this process of, of carbon dating, and the evidence placed these things at roughly 14,300 years old. And there was an article written about it in the Smithsonian. And, and they said, yeah, this we can definitively, through scientific um, processes, say it's, a, it's pretty close to about 14,000 years old. And you think, well, that's not too bad. We're not talking millions. We're not talking billions. 14,000. Okay, like we can go with that. But let's look at the Bible now, shall we? One of the coolest passages to me is in Luke chapter 3. And whenever you read it, you're like, what? I, I sometimes read the Bible on audio. You know what I mean? Like I listen to it. And I love hearing the guy um, read through this part, because especially like on two times speed, because it sounds so funny. But what it is, is the genealogy all the way from Adam, the first person ever to walk the planet, up to Jesus. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it starts off in Luke 3, verse 23. Jesus himself, Luke writes, was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. And then it goes into it. He was the son, so it was thought, Joseph, right, who was of Heli, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, and I'm not going to read them all because it just goes on. The son of 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 Enosh in verse 38, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. And it, it, it draws like Jesus all the way back through everyone that, that had existed to the first created person. What's cool about this is that there are 76 generations. These are corroborated by biblical and extra biblical historical documents that are proven and they all match up and add up. Like historically, yes, all those people lived. They all had the son named this. They lived for that long. It all adds up. It makes sense whether you're a Christian or not. This history. From Adam, the first person, to Jesus, listen, 300, I mean 3,974 years, six months, and 10 days. So just under 4,000 years. From Jesus, so you're talking about beginning of time, to Jesus. From Jesus, to us, another 2,022 years, right? So the whole big picture from the first person to us right here, right now, about 6,000 years, right? So how can science say that there's evidence of human life 14,000 years old? It's, it's over twice as long as what the Bible would say. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Some of us right now, are asking the same question I did in high school. What do we do with that? What the heck do we do with that? Some of us right now are thinking, well, I'm just going to get the answers right on the test and believe what I believe. Others of us are utterly confused. Others of us, it doesn't change a thing because science is wrong, <laughs> right? We're going to settle somewhere in the middle. And we have still one more week left in this series and uh, for today, we're not going to get into all the answers, but I do encourage you to come back next week because we're going to really cap it off. As we finish this time together, I want to ask a question. Would you take a free trip to Hawaii right now? Would you take a free trip to Hawaii right now? Like, let's just say, hypothetically, let's just say, hypothetically, you all wanted to go to Hawaii right now. Uh, and, and you would get on that plane, no problem. You're like, yes, I will go to a tropical paradise and leave my parents behind and just go and try to learn how to surf and catch a sea turtle. Sounds awesome. <laughs> That's just me. I don't, okay, fine. But here's the thing. You don't know all of the scientific details involved with getting a 100,000-pound piece of metal into the sky that reliably with that many people. Like, you don't know how it all works. You don't know all of the details. But the reason we would get on the plane without knowing all of the details is because, listen to this, our faith is not in the explanation. Our faith is in the pilot. That the pilot knows things that we don't know. And we trust the pilot. We don't have to know all of the, the ins and outs and the technological things that have to work together just right to make it happen. We just know it's going to happen. And we trust it and we believe it. And our faith has got to work like this. There's a passage in Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. And it, it reads this, The Son, that's Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. 
Remember last week we said that he was there at the beginning. Jesus was and he always was wasing and and he is and he always will be. He, right? And 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 he was there and it says he's the firstborn over all creation. He was there before it all. For in him, that's Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven, things on earth, visible things and invisible ones, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. It's all for, for the glory of Jesus Christ. He's before all things and in him, all things hold together. So everything exists by, through, and for Jesus. He is our pilot and our plane is this planet. We're on it. And we don't understand how it all works. But our faith isn't in the explanation. Our faith is in the pilot that he does. We don't know it all, but he does. And we know that for sure. Because Jesus really did what he said he was going to do. Because Jesus believed the Bible, the whole Old Testament, he adhered to it. And if he believed in it and he trusted it and he really was the son of God, God himself, and if he really died and rose again and then, and then ascended, like, I don't, I don't have to know how it all works. I'm going with that guy. I trust that guy, right? Like, I want to go on, on that journey. And I don't know about you, but it, it's the best journey you could ever, it's way better than Hawaii, all right? And just like the plane, we can ask the pilot things, and he might explain them to us. He might even give us the owner's manual for the plane. And we might read it and be like, I have no idea what that means. But we can try to learn and grow in our understanding and to define the terms and decode the manual that is made readily available to all of us here. It's called the Bible. The bottom line for this morning is you can trust someone before you know everything. My question is, do you trust God fully? Do you trust him? Or you still have your doubts? Do you still have your reservations? Are you still waiting to know everything? That was the hang up for me. It was like, I want to put my faith in Jesus, but I can't explain this guy living in a fish thing. I can't explain this whole like global flood thing. So... Not ready to trust you yet, God. But you can trust someone before you know everything. You don't have to know everything to trust someone. In fact, I would encourage you to trust first and learn along the way. You will grow. But taking that, getting on the plane will be the best thing that you can do. In fact, we trust people without knowing everything all the time. There are like fitness influencers that will take a, an eating plan or a workout regimen from. We don't know how that all works. We just think we're going to get them abs, right? The, the weatherman, I mean, yeah, they're wrong like a lot, but we still trust them. Some of y'all put a jacket on this morning before you even went outside because you looked at your phone and you said it was 55 degrees. You trusted it. <laughs> there are tech companies who've made technology that you use every day. You don't know how it all works. You use it. Will you add Jesus to that list of people that you trust before you know everything? Even when you have questions, even when it doesn't make sense and you're wrestling through it and you still wonder, will you trust him? <laughs>